I met Guy Gerber a couple of years ago, and we came up with this idea to do this collaboration. It's called 1111, and it's a little different, and we wanted to just get a select few of our friends together and let y'all hear a couple of cuts. feeling that they know you for certain things. A lot of times, musically, you'll get pigeonholed. You know, I was a dancer, and I just loved all types of music, but I really became a househead. Just coming up in early 90s, late 80s, there was this fusion going on in New York with the hip hop clubs and dance music. I used to go to the opening of Sound Factory with Junior Vasquez, and I danced in there for two and a half days nonstop. I was always on a search and a journey for DJs that would give you an experience. Guy Gerber, somebody sent me his playlist and I just fell in love with the whole album. It was such a vibe and it was so unapologetic and it was just so soulful. I was in Tel Aviv in the studio and then I get this email and so a guy called Ralph and he says, Puff Daddy is looking for you. I was sure it was some kind of a joke. He called me, I was just coming out of the shower. He said, I'm a fan, come to New York, let's make some music together. I had samples, a song from Guy's album, and then I called him and we met. And we just been having this odd couple type of relationship. We came up with some ideas, just try to do something musically different because he understands hip hop and I understand dance music. I didn't even know what he wants. So I started creating a lot of stuff. And at one point he said, I already have the radio. I already have the commercial side. I'm not looking for something like this. I want to do something that will be played in rooms that I'm not supposed to be in. Basically, let's make something weird. I went to the studio, I get to the room, gave him a hug, he was on the phone, told him I'm gonna go set up the stuff and I'm gonna play you what I was doing the day before. So I went to Studio B, I set up my stuff, I'm pressing open file, which I just, just worked on it. File is corrupted. So I came back to him and I was like, and hey, look, I'm sorry, but I have a problem with the file. And he turned around and he's like, no, what happened? I told him, no, don't worry, I'm just gonna go and reassemble everything. And I reworked it and I had like some kind of like a demo that I did the other night. So just before he got in, I took the file, I threw it in to the software, it mapped it, and I just pressed play. And then he was listening to it and he was like, uh, uh, uh. turn it loud, and then he said, you're a genius. You totally interpreted how the song should be. So I was like, yeah, of course, of course. I mean, that's why I'm here. Did you like these chords? This means something to you? Because if it means it's something great. to you. It's great. It's All right. Great. I would say the sessions were extremely frustrating for me because, um, <laughs> because guys are a different type of producer. I am panim po <laughs> Definitely going to use this right now. He's like a jazz player in a sense, so he plays like from his soul, but then he has a bad memory and he'll forget what he played. So it took us a minute to get over that and get on the same page. I don't really like that one. Hi. James like it. As a manager, your job is to make dreams come true. And this has been a dream of Sean. Too. This is something that came sincerely from his heart and Guy's heart. Guy and Puff are two very strong personalities. They're both artists. They're both you know, very passionate about what they do. Hope. Yeah, hope. There's the spiritual. Hope. Okay. There's hope. There's hope in this track. 
I can dig it. Sean is a genius and Guy's a genius. So you have this very thin line between genius and insanity. Me and him, I have this character. He has his character. And it's like that. Yeah. Yo, your accent's gonna get us a lot of holes for real. <laughs> <laughs> For me, there was joy in the music and the way I created it, like it's a lot of improvisation. And because there is no genre, and it's like not supposed to be maybe an album, maybe a track, maybe a club. We almost got pulled into trying to make records that have a certain format. I would really describe 1111 as just one long record, one long journey, one long emotion. I believe that this project is going to explain not only the love of music that they both have, but also how a real connection with another human being can create magic. You know what I mean? Let's go back to the essence of who we are as individuals. And rather than exchange dollars and cents and checks, let's exchange energy and ideas and love. 1111 for us means when two worlds collide and open a gate to another dimension. I wouldn't put it in the genre of dance music, you know what I'm saying? This is just something new. It's like one of the first bodies of work from the quote unquote dance world that is so emotional and fearless, provocative, spiritual. I want to warn you right now, it ain't for everybody, so if you're looking for the drop and when you throw your hands and jump up in the air like a pogo stick, this ain't really that type, type of thing. It's where you lose your mind, body, and soul, let yourself be free. You know, you have this career, and before I was in a rock band, and I always was looking for an opportunity is to go back and just to make music, just for the sake of making music like I, I was doing it before. I would put down these different ideas and then trust him to go bring the vision of life. What inspired me in him that despite the fact that he has everything, he's still passionate to push it to the next level. You know, my first love is producing and creating a unique sonic sound. No matter what kind of music you listen to, you like when you hear this, I think you'll feel like, you know, there are no rules, there are no boundaries. But most importantly, I want to fuck people up on the dance floor at like 7.30 in the morning. And I don't want them to have to be on no drugs because the music itself will get you higher than the motherfucker. Yo, Matt, this beat right here I want to get. Are you filming this? Are you, are you on this? Are you, are you being cinematic? Yeah, 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 but I don't, I don't, I don't see you giving me my close-up. No. <laughs>